Hi guys, I thought I'd answer a few questions from you about today's show before we get started. Yes, David Rothstein. What's on the wrist? Have you ever bought a watch without inspecting it? Yes, I have. Yes, Maynard Joseph. Was it an Armand Nicolet? Yes, it was. Bob from Brisbane. Would you buy an Armand Nicolet again? Great question. And the answer is... All right, hello again. As we can tell from the intro, we're talking about watches that we bought online without ever having handled it or ever seeing it in person. Basically, ordering a watch unseen and the consequences for that. Last year at this time to treat me, treat myself, treat me, treat myself to a Christmas present, I looked into Armand Nicolet's L14, which is part of their... OHM line, their original historical movement, or NOS, their new old stock. There's a lot of abbreviations flying around here, so I'm going to throw this one in. Tony Backwards. Do we know what that one is? Why not? I know that's super cheesy, but we'll see if I leave that in here. But last year, I looked into the OHM, the blue model here, and I thought everything about this watch is so stunning looking, and everything I've read and heard about was positive on the Armand Nicolet, specifically this L14. And this is a watch that is unlike any other watch I own. I really like this open face front, this, and it has an in-house movement. The new old stock movement, this OHM movement, is they had a lot of variations of it. They had it in the Unitas, or the Venus, or even Etta, but... This particular movement was actually made by Armand Nicolet. So this was their in-house manual wine movement. It, it was a really stunning looking watch. It was 42 millimeters. It had a genuine uh, alligator strap. So everything about this really looked sharp. In addition to blue, the L14 comes in a variety of other colors. I think it comes in gray and black and a combination of gray and black. But I always thought the blue one looked the sharpest. But I was wrong. The L14 retails for $6,250. At least it did last year. I think the prices have gone up this year. Uh, but I paid $1,050, I think. It was well over 80% off. And I didn't buy it from the Armand Nicolet's website. I bought it from Ashford.com. Uh, and because this watch looked so gorgeous in every single picture that I've seen, I was expecting the hallelujah moment when I opened the box. But fast forward, not so much. All right, let's rewind and come back. When I did see this watch for the very first time, I was really disappointed. Uh, I opened the box, it was a very plain, simple looking box. I think we don't really have a choice with the type of box that we get. Sometimes it is a lacquered box and sometimes it's this padded box, but I received a padded box. Okay, I can get past that. But the watch itself, it was a very dull blue. It didn't have the, the rich looking blue that I was expecting. It wasn't even a steel blue, which I could have handled because I think some steel blue watches are really nice looking. The fit and finish on this was very, minimum there wasn't any depth to the polish it was so beneath any other polished finishing that i've seen and the leather alligator strap yes it was a genuine alligator strap which is what it's it stamped as but it was the flimsiest cheapest leather strap that i've ever seen on the inside of the strap it wasn't smooth leather and it wasn't suede it just looked really uh, just broken and beaten up almost it reminded me of an old shag carpeting bad shag carpeting so we can see that Armand Nicolet cut corners on its finishing and the leather strap and just really focused their attention on the design of the dial and they for that they did a really nice job but they failed in the in the blue that was advertised um, I, could this have been an anomaly Ooh, I got that road right I thought that was gonna be a tongue twister for me anomaly anomaly yeah, don't get cocky, Rich. All right, stay focused. So on a $6,000 plus retail watch, this is not something we would expect for a watch company to cut corners on the finishing and the strap. Two very important elements of a watch. Clearly, this is not a, a genuine $6,000 watch. I would actually put this watch as a retail for about $1,050, maybe $1,100 what I actually paid for it. And I would have expected to pay maybe $400 to $500 for the condition that this watch came in. Um, and going back to it being an, an anomaly, uh, I finally screwed up on that word. But I don't think so because look at Rolex. Rolex is quality control. They produce a million watches a year and every watch comes out perfectly. But for this Armand Nicolet OHM L14 model, there were only 499 pieces because this was a limited edition run of 499. For one watch to slip through of 499 seems kind of weird to me. I would kind of question what kind of QC that Armand Nicolet had going on for it because it's not a lot of watches. So I could have given up on this watch when I first saw its appearance, but you know, I really, I like this open dial front and I wanted to give this a watch a chance. And I had 14 days 
uh, to decide if I want to keep this watch because that's Ashford's return policy. So the first thing that I always do is to check its movement. So I'm not going to cut the tags off because we know once we do that, the watch is used and we can't send it back. So with the tags on, I wound it up. And this is a manual wind movement, mind you. And the first night, it is a 36 hour power reserve, but I believe I only got 35 hours. Okay, all right, maybe I forgot what time I exactly wound it. So we did it again. And I did it four nights later and each night the watch got lower, the power reserve got lower and lower and lower to finally it was less than six hours. Not even a full day's wind on that watch. And it's a manual wind watch like I said, so you can't really screw that up and it wasn't anything I did wrong. I mean, we just wind it until we feel the resistance and that's it. So. I contacted Ashford right away, and Ashford was really good about this. I, I have a lot of confidence in them. They didn't try to make any excuses or upsell me to another watch. They offered to uh, service this watch, but because this watch is literally brand new, I'm not going to service this watch. That's a bit of a turnoff. Yes, I could have exchanged it for another watch, but after all that, I wasn't going to do that. So I gave up on that watch. So. Armand Nicholas, we got to rewind again because I'm kind of all over the place here. The Armand Nicholas customer service is actually really good. Be between the L14, I was also looking at their MO2, two of their nicest looking watches. And Armand Nicholas website is a really nice looking website. They have some gorgeous looking watches, again, in pictures only. They revamped this year's lineup of watches completely from what it was last year. And I do think that this year's watches look a lot nicer. I hope they actually look as nice in person as they do in these pictures, but their website is really nice looking. Armand Nicolet has been using those OHM movements or producing those OHM movements from 1957 up until the quartz boom. And then of course they had to squirrel away those manual wand movements because there wasn't a demand for those movements anymore because of the quartz watches that started to take over. And according to Armand Nicolet, someone from that company eventually found all these movements squirreled away in a vault and they had to be verified and confirmed that those were the movement from the era of the 50s and hence the L14 watches were born. And I think this is a perfect example of how an in-house movement is not necessarily or automatically better than an ETA movement. Uh, ETA movements receive criticism when a watch brand charges too much for an ETA based movement. For example, like $10,000 or more, then it receives that criticism. But generally, we respect an ETA movement because they are reliable and a workhorse of a movement. Just not when a brand charges an extraordinary amount for an ETA. I don't think buying any item unseen is necessarily a bad idea. I know Mercedes-Benz did this with their all new C-Class a couple iterations ago where before we could even see the car in person, they had pre-orders and they sold 55,000 cars unseen just on pre-order. So it can be successful if the company behind them is trustworthy. This was not, the Armand Nicolet was not my first watch unseen. I bought three watches unseen and two of the three had, I had a pleasant experience. And one of the other watches is my uh, JR, my Jean Richard Aeroscope. I also bought this from Air, um, Ashford. And this is, a, this is a fine watch. Everything about this watch was really nice. And I'm, re I'm still very pleased with this watch. I put this watch through a severe beating and I actually made a video on this, the DLC versus PVD coating. And this watch really stood up nicely. And look at this, there's not a single mark uh, on this watch. The other watch that I bought unseen was of course my Grand Seiko, my SBGR097. Uh, I wasn't worried about this watch at all. And when I got this watch, and I did, this was my very first unboxing that I ever did was on my Grand Seiko. And you can tell I was really excited about this watch. And I had such high expectations for my Grand Seiko. I wasn't sure if it could live up to that expectation because when we set such high goals or high expectations for anything or even a person, it's very hard to live up to that. And one of the great stories that I had was the very first time I met Michael Jordan, the GOAT. I was a kid at that time and he was my childhood hero, Michael Jordan. And I remember when I, when I reached out and I shook his hand and I, I remember stuttering a couple of times before some words came up out of my mouth, probably something like, it's, it's nice to meet you. And instead of him blowing me off or just shaking my hand and not making any eye contact, he actually shook my hand, held my hand and made eye contact with me because I remember that because I was so intimidated by looking up and at Michael Jordan making eye contact with me, a friendly eye contact with me, not one of his competitive stares against his opponents on court. Uh, and he said, how are you? I hope you're doing well. And I remember that I couldn't, I couldn't re respond right away. I think I started a couple times before I probably said something like, I I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay, thank you. And the whole time he didn't just look around and saying, okay, next, 
he, he, he held his eye contact with me and I I just remember how that how awesome of an experience I was and, and how that experience still stays with me. Okay, I went all over the map on that pl- on that topic. But my point is on the Grand Seiko, I had such high expectations for this that I wasn't sure if it could live up to that. So I thought about before I actually received my Grand Seiko, should I lower my expectations on this so I won't be disappointed? But I said, nah, let's see if I can live up, to, see if this Grand Seiko can live up to those expectations. And when I got the watch, yes, I had that hallelujah moment. It was everything that I thought it would be and more. I mean, we all hear about its Zeratu polishing and that finishing. And this watch was like a mirror, like a window, a mirror that was just windexed by someone professionally cleaning that window. It was so, it was so perfect. And the color, the blue was so perfect that this watch did not look any different in person than in the photographs that uh, I've seen. In fact, it looked better in person. And that's what we want in a watch. But when I received my Armand Nicola, it didn't even get the, oh, okay, it's, it's what I expected. It was just pure disappointment. And we all want that oh, you got to see this watch in person because pictures don't do it justice. And that was the experience that I had with my Grand Seiko. So two of the watches, my JR and a Grand Seiko, um, did not scar me. You get the beauty scar, tough guy. Enough that I would not buy another watch online. But I hate to end anything on a negative note regarding uh, Armand Nicolet. So I want to talk about their customer service. Their customer service was first rate. Uh, and customer service is so important for anything. And when I contacted them, and I contacted them several times via email regarding their MO2 and the L14, they were always prompt in getting back to me. And if they didn't have the answer right away, they would get back to me and say, I don't have the answer, but let me get the answer for you. And they would come back with it promptly. So I felt comfortable and confident enough to order that watch, which is what I eventually did. So their customer service is first rate. Um, Let me think about something else really nice to say about Armand Nicolet. Well, they have really good customer service and I don't want to dismiss that or minimize the importance of customer service. So at least Armand Nicolet has that going on for him. And if any of you have a positive experience with your Armand Nicolet, please let me know. And this might be the last show that we see each other before the holidays. So if I don't see you before the holidays, I hope you all have a good and safe and happy holiday season. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time. Four questions. Yes, I'm rich bitch. Will you be spending the holidays with family and friends? Yes, I am. Holidays are meant to be spent with family and friends, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, Celestial Fix. Are you going to buy a watch for yourself this season? No, but I am open to gifts. Yes, Marin from Watch Geek. Who does the best watch tutorials? Well, you, of course. I think you do the best tuto- best tuto- tutorials on watches. So between Jean Richard and Armand Nicolet, which watch would I prefer if both watches looked exactly the same in person? I'd like to give that Armand Nicolet another chance.